Can you figure out why satellite orbits look like sine waves on maps? The premise of these videos is the idea that by figuring something out for yourself, you learn it much better than you would if someone just handed you the answer because you intuitively understand it, and that helps you remember it much better too. So in this video, we're gonna figure out satellite orbits. Have you ever noticed how the paths of their orbits look like sine waves when they're plotted on a map? That always used to bother me in things like movies with space travel where you'd see those maps on the big board in Mission Control or whatever. That's because I naturally figured that those maps were implying that the satellite was orbiting something like this. And I knew that couldn't actually be the case because Newton's first law of motion states that an object in motion tends to stay in motion unless acted upon by another force, which means that a satellite should move in a straight line unless acted on by another force like gravity which pulls it back towards the Earth, which makes a circular orbit totally possible, but it shouldn't be able to go up and then back down and then back up again like that because there's nothing pushing it back down and then back up. So I knew that satellites couldn't actually move like that, and I figured they were just using maps like those in movies because they thought they looked cooler or something, and I thought that was really lame. But eventually I figured out that no, that's what circular orbits actually look like if you plot them on a flat map. So figuring out why that's the case is the point of this video. If you want to pause the video now and try and figure it out for yourself without any help, go for it, but it'll be helpful to know a little bit more about maps, so for those of you that want that information, here's everything you need to know. First of all, if you ever see a map like this where the path of the satellite looks like several sine waves right next to each other, that's not depicting a single orbit. The satellite is following one of those lines on its current orbit, and then on subsequent orbits it'll be following the others. So for the purpose of figuring this out, we can disregard all but one of those lines. Now, this all has to do with how maps try to depict the surface of a three-dimensional globe onto a two-dimensional plane. It's a lot harder than you might think. I can't just flatten this globe. Half of it's on the other side and there's folds everywhere. I can try and cut it, but in order to get it to lie flat at all, I have to cut it a lot, and it ends up looking something like this. Cutting it up like this is how some map projections deal with the problem, but that can make it really hard to tell how far apart places like the United States and Europe really are. So what most maps do is to stretch things so that they fit back together nicely, and stretching things distorts the size of some places and the distances between them. For example, one of the most popular kinds of maps is called the Mercator map, and this clip illustrates how it's made, which results in the areas near the poles being drastically enlarged. In this kind of map, Greenland and Africa look like they're almost the same size, but... Would it blow your mind if I told you that Africa is, in reality, 14 times larger? The West Wing famously pointed out that this also has tragic social consequences, considering that in our society we unconsciously equate size with importance, and in these maps, third world countries are misrepresented, making them likely to be valued less. Anyway, I know at this point you're probably asking, what does this have to do with satellite orbits? But the point is that two-dimensional maps distort what things actually look like around our three-dimensional world. And that's the root of why a circular orbit like this ends up looking like a sine wave when you plot it on a map. But can you actually figure out the mechanics of why that is? For example, if you're trying to explain it to a little kid, could you come up with a demonstration that actually illustrates how that distortion happens using props like a ball and a sheet of paper to represent our spherical Earth in a flat map? So, can you figure out why satellite orbits look like sine waves on a map? Pause the video now and see if you can figure it out. If you can't, then no worries. When you start the video again, I'll explain everything and you'll still have gotten your brain engaged and primed to really learn it well. So one way you could do it would be to use an actual globe and an actual map, and draw a circle around the globe and then try and plot that same line onto a map, or draw a sine wave on a map and try and plot it onto the globe. But since that distortion really comes from changing between a three-dimensional sphere and a two-dimensional sheet, I feel like the most effective demonstration is to have a prop make that same change. We've already seen how hard it is to try and flatten a globe, but if we do the opposite, what happens to a sine wave on a flat sheet of paper if you roll it around on itself? It becomes a circle! It's easier to see if you draw a single sine wave on a blank piece of paper and then tape it around on itself. Or better yet, start with a blank piece of paper rolled around on itself, draw a circle onto it, and then unroll it into a sine wave. And this is the most common general type of orbit, but there's an infinite number of possibilities. For example, if a satellite were orbiting perfectly around the equator, its plot on a map would look like a straight line right on top of the equator. It could pass really close to the Earth right here going east, but spend a long time out here such that as the Earth turns, its plot makes it look like it's now going back to the west, before it dives back down to the east again. 
which will result in a path that looks like this. Or a satellite in geosynchronous orbit goes around at the exact same rate that the world turns, meaning it's always over the exact same spot on Earth, meaning its plot on a map would just be a dot, or at most a vertical line. Anyway, that's why most satellite orbits look like sine waves on maps. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're interested in more lessons like this, you can click on a playlist right here that'll take you to more videos where I help you try and figure out cool things for yourself, or you can subscribe to the channel if you want an update whenever a new one comes out. Thanks for watching.